To create our power-ups, we're going to need several new assets. Over here in the sprites, I've created a new group for power-ups, and I've created a sprite power-up. This is 24 by 24, and the origin is centered. And you'll notice this time it says I have a number of sub-images. I actually have five, and I've got arrows that allow me to go between them. If we click on Edit Sprite, you can see that instead of the usual one image, I now have a sequence of five. To add a new image, you can just come up to this little paper with a plus icon, and it will insert an empty frame at the end of your sequence. This is most useful for setting up frames in an animation so that you can keep the entire animation sequence inside of one sprite. And In fact, if you came over and checked this show preview, it would cycle through all the frames. In our case, we're just stuffing a bunch of these images into one sprite and we will change between them as we need them. Note that the sequence begins with image zero, not one. So even though we have five images in our sprite, the last one is image 4. The five images are a little cancel symbol, and this will reset the paddle back to normal. Then we've got arrows pointing in, and this will shrink the paddle. Arrows pointing out, and this will stretch the paddle. I've got a solid ball, and this will be for the power-up that turns our ball into a bomb. And then I've got this little laser bar for when we turn our paddle into a laser paddle. So click the check mark, click OK, and then we need to create an object. I've created a new folder for power-ups in the objects, and then I've created object power-up, and given it the sprite for our power-up. It's also set to visible, and I have set the depth to negative 100. We know that we have an x-axis and a y-axis. But we also have a z-axis that comes towards us or goes away from us. When images are drawn on screen, they are drawn in layers. By default, all of our objects have a depth of zero, which essentially puts them all on the same layer. But if we put our object power up on a depth of negative 100, that will appear 100 layers above layer zero. And likewise, if we put it on a depth of 100, it would appear 100 layers below layer 0. By setting this object power up to a depth of negative 100, we are ensuring that it will appear above all of our other objects. Right now, the sprite power up is just going to cycle through all of those five images inside the sprite. So when this power up is created, we need to make the object choose which image it is going to have. So let's add an event, create, then we'll come over to control and set variable. We are going to create the variable decision. And this variable is going to hold the number of the sub-image in our sprite. To get that, we are going to give it a value of choose, open parentheses, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, close parentheses. This choose is a built-in function in GameMaker, and the values that we are passing in correspond to the sub-images inside of our power-up sprite. What choose does is randomly selects one of these values, and it will return that value to our variable. So our decision will be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, depending on what is randomly chosen. We're starting at 0 because the first sub-image in the sequence is image 0. So click OK. And now we need to actually set that sprite to appear in our object. So we'll come to main 1. Underneath sprite, this first little Pac-Man icon, change sprite. And the sprite is going to be that sprite power-up and the sub-image is going to be equal to the decision variable because remember that decision variable is holding on to the number of the sub-image that is randomly selected. We also want to set the speed to zero because we don't want this cycling through all of the images. A speed of one means that every step or every frame it will change to the next image in the sequence. By setting it to zero, we are essentially stopping it at the sub-image, 
that our decision variable gives us. So hit OK. And then finally we want the power up to drift down the screen so that we can hit it with the paddle. So let's go to move, move fixed, select the down arrow and let's give it a speed of 8. Hit OK. And just in case we miss it with the paddle we want to make sure that it is destroyed as soon as it goes off screen. So let's go add event, other, outside room, come back to main 1, select the recycle bin, destroy instance, and self. So now just in case we miss, it will destroy itself and not go floating off the screen forever. So we can go ahead and close the object window and let's open up the object ball because now we need to make the object power up appear every time a brick is destroyed. So select the object brick 1 collision and we don't want a power up to appear for every brick that is destroyed. We only want there to be a small chance that a power up will actually show up otherwise the game will just be too easy. So the way we set that up is to come over to control and in our questions we're looking for this little die and this is the test chance. We want to drag that underneath the bounce against solid object. And now we can give our die a number of sides which will essentially give us our percentage that this action will trigger. For testing purposes we want this to happen pretty frequently so I'm just going to give it two sides and hit OK and we see now it says with a chance one out of two perform the next. So we have a 50% chance that this will happen. Obviously in the real game we'd want this to happen less frequently so we'd probably set it one out of four or one out of five or whatever. But I'm going to drag some blocks underneath this test chance and then I'm going to come over to main one, objects, create instance, and drag that into the blocks. The object is going to be that object power up at an x of zero, y of zero, and relative. Because this is being applied to the object ball, it will then create a power up at its x and y position. Click OK. And now we've set it up so that when a ball hits a brick, there is a 50% chance that it will create a power-up for us. So let's go ahead and see that. Okay, so we've got one showing up, another one, and another one. And you can see that the icon is different each time because it is randomly being selected. But uh, right now the power-ups don't actually do anything when we hit the paddle. So in the next video, we'll make it so that our power-ups actually do something.